crush of protesters, complete with drummers and singers, as it proceeded along Commerce Street shortly before midday, made its way to CIBC First Caribbean Bank in Dangriga. The peaceful demonstration succeeds a chorus of disapproval from residents earlier this week when the plight of Juan Martinez, an employee of the lending institution who has been barred from speaking Garifna while transacting business with customers, was made public. Today, dozens, including others from various ethnicities, took to the streets to voice their discontent. I think the natives have ample reason to be riled up. We have put up with this foolishness for way, way too long. Um, there was a time people will tell you when um, the use of our language was limited in schools to, uh, and churches, um, and um, we allowed it. But uh, this was then, this is now, you know, times have changed. Um, we are supposed to be enlightened. We know our rights now. And um, there is an international law to bolster our position. That position is that the use of Garifuna, an indigenous language recognized by UNESCO as such, should be encouraging an effort to preserve the cultural tongue of the Garifuna people. The issue of its prohibition in the workplace, particularly in Dangriga, where a majority of the population is comprised of that ethnic group, has rubbed residents the wrong way. President of the National Garifuna Council, Robert Mariano, spoke on behalf of the organization. The NGC um, is totally unhappy um, with the rules of the bank where being in a Garifuna community, um, Garifuna people cannot speak their own language when doing transaction in the bank. Um, as president, I have received several emails, calls, texts, and even comments from people within our community and from other parts of the world. The universal sentiment, one of utter disdain, has resulted in an ultimatum by residents of Dangriga. You're hearing people saying that um, if the bank cannot cooperate with us, then best they pack up and just leave. Um, people are totally unhappy, or my people are totally unhappy about this. And if you look around, you'll notice that um, we don't just have only Garifuna people here. We have um, Belize is a diverse country, and we have people from all walks of life here. We have the Creole, we have Spanish, we have Garifuna, we have Mayans. We have so many people who are here supporting us as well. Among them is Dr. Louis Zabane, a well-known and respected member of this coastal community. All the circumstances here are very shocking to me. I certainly had to come out and lend my support to, to my community. This is where I grew up. I have all my, my family and friends are from here. And so I had to come and, and, and find that this is quite shocking if that's the case. And it's something that certainly cannot be tolerated in our country if that's the case. Do you think that if these particular allegations prove to be true, that the policy of the bank needs to change almost immediately with regards to the fact that it is operating within a predominantly Garifuna community? Well, there, there, there should be no hesitation. I mean, in fact, I would say that even, even if it's not the case, that the bank has to be much more proactive and come out and say, listen, this, this is not us, and, and, and do certain things to gain back the confidence of the community. It is very simple. I mean, um, a bank is a very important institution. It's where people place their trust. And um, anything like this uh, is certainly totally unacceptable. They have The issue, as far as it concerns the bank's position, also goes beyond party political color lines. Present and very vocal in the protests were various political leaders, including Mayor Gilbert Suazo, era representative Ivan Ramos, and political hopeful Frank Papamena. The bank came here. What the bank found here is for here. And so that, 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 that as, as far as I put that, that, that that's garbage. And, and we have to stand up because these are the small things that fester and they become so huge that they become uncontrollable. So we have to stand up. Zero tolerance to that. When other languages come in the workplace and they speak as they so desire, nothing is being said. And I don't want to single out any group, but many other groups speak strongly wherever in the bank 
and nothing is being done, nothing is being said. So why is the Garifuna being singled out and uh, in, in, in that fashion? I am appalled by the position of the bank and uh, I couldn't believe when you look deeper, when I look deeper into the policy that the bank in this time and age is still condoning racism to such an extent. Um, it's, it's a situation that needs to be corrected immediately. Dangriga is a Garifna town. Um, and I would feel very, very uncomfortable not being able to speak Garifuna. But the issue is beyond that. The policy of the bank needs to change. And those that they send to Dangriga need to be sensitive that they are also doing business in a Garifna community and Garifna people. So to have such a policy is simply unacceptable. The management of CIBC First Caribbean convened a meeting this afternoon in Dangriga with the leadership of the National Garifna Council, as well as the era representative and other prominent members of the community. It is unclear, however, what the status of Martinez's employment is and if a similar meeting has been held with the Christian Workers' Union, the representative body of the bank's employees. Reporting for News 5, I am Isanika Etano.